gestation period, uh, length of pregnancy of the of the hippo is normally distributed, between F200, standard deviation of 2.5. Um, use technology to answer the following questions. So what proportion or percentage uh, of, of pregnancies last more than 204 days? So I would expect you to show me this in normal CDF, and then you would go 204, and here you just put in a really big number. And this would be 200 and three and a half. Can't see that, but anyways. Uh, so once you do that, you get 0 0.1265 and something, so that would be 12.65% of pregnancies. But the 12.5 is what I'm after there. 12.5%, 65%. Next, only 10% of hippo pregnancies last less than this many days. Okay. So the 10% okay, it would be over here. That's the assumption that the 10% goes there. Because 10% lasts less than this uh, amount. So inverse norm. You go 0 0.1, and then you go 200, 3.5, and that would be 195.51 days. We're talking days here, so it's okay to have it as a decimal. One mark so far for each. Only 20% of hippo pregnancies last longer than you know a certain amount of days, so. 20% would be over here. And so that means that this is 80. So I need to see the 80 inside of inverse norm. And it's inverse norm because we are given percentages. So this would be 0 0.8 and then 200, 3.5. And you get 202.95 days. And I give you an one mark for having the 0 0.8 and one mark for actually coming up with the answer. So if you put 0 0.2 in here, I would still give you one mark for the fact that you used inverse norm. Okay, so inverse norm is what we're after here. So keep that in mind. Next, the middle 70% of hippo pregnancies last between this many days. So they're giving you basically the middle 70%. So we're going to figure out right this one and this one, like the two um, days, number of days that would have 70% in between. So we go inverse norm of, and this is what we covered yesterday. It's 100, right? You go uh, 100 minus the 70 in the middle. That gives you 30%. And you split that in half which gives you 15, right? So the one goes there, 15 goes there, and 15 goes there. And that's important because inverse norm always wants the percentage to the left of the value you're trying to find. So this would be 0 0.15, 200, 3.5. So that would give you 196.37 days. Um, I will say this, you get a mark for coming up with the 15 and then another mark for coming up uh, using inverse norm. And then you've got to do another inverse norm where you're going to add 15 and 70 because 85% of pregnancies last less than this, right? So 0.85, that's another mark for that. 200, 3.5, and that would be 230, no, sorry, 203.63 days. That's another mark for that. So four, we're going to change this one to four marks just to make it easier on us in terms of uh, marks attributed. So four and two, that's six, seven, eight. So this page is worth eight marks. So again, if you used inverse norm, uh, I would give you two out of four if you did inverse norm twice. 
back side. Oh, yeah. You show me the decimal and the rounded. Yeah, then it's fine. Back side. Okay, so now it's the, we're talking about the poison dart frogs. There's the mean and your standard deviation. Calculate the z-score for uh, a frog that measures 21 millimeters long. So you could use this formula. So that would be 21 minus 20 over uh, 0 0.7. That's 1 over 0 0.7. That would give you 1.43, and it has no units. Uh, so I'll give you one mark for this, one mark for that, and then we'll give you another mark for the explanation. Because it says explain what it means. Uh, a frog. Uh, with a length, sorry, with a length of 21 millimeters is 1.43 standard deviations above the mean. That's what it means. Why above? Because it's positive. So I'll give you another mark for the explanation there. So we'll make this question worth two total, right? One and one. Uh, what a different poison a dart frog is this long? What percentage of frogs would we expect to be shorter? What percentage? So it's normal CDF. And just put in a really small number here. So minus 10,000 will do and 20.47. And this is 20 and 0 0.7 like that. You get 0 0.749. And that's 74.9% of frogs. One mark for that. Next, what percentage of frogs are shorter than 20.1? or longer than 22.2. Uh, you didn't have to show me two methods, but if you did, way to go. Uh, what I basically would want you to do is this, imagine this is 20.1 and this is 22.2, not drawn to scale, but uh, the, the question wants this and this, okay? That's what we want. So what I will do is I'll find normal CDF uh, between these two lengths. And that gives you 0 0.4424. Um, so I give you a mark for that. And so this is what you really want. One minus this. Let's put this in our curve here. This is 0 0.4424. We're going to subtract that from 1, and then we're left with the tails. Okay. That's 0 0.5576 or 55.76%. The other method would be to have two normal CDFs, one where you find what's a percentage shorter and you find percentage uh, longer than 22.2 and you add up your two answers. That would have been another way of doing this. So I'll give you a second mark for this step here. So one for finding, regardless of which method you used, you would get two marks here. But this is called indirect reasoning. Okay? You're, you're finding it a different way than just going straight forward and adding. 
Um, let's just do this. Okay, this is what that section would be. And the frogs that are shorter than that, that will be here, right? So this is the answer. We find to in between, we take away those frogs, then we're left with everything else. Uh, I'm just going to show you, I don't want to uh, use up more of the space, but I'll show you the other method in case you're wondering, like, what is he talking about? So look down here, the other method, like you do a normal CDF where you find frogs that are shorter than 20.1. And then you add normal CDF of frogs that are longer, right, than 22 points. So you go 22.2 to 10,000. And then if you add up these two answers, you still come up with the same final result. Okay. So if you do the work, if you work, work through this, you'll find that there are more ways often to come up with your final answer. D, if, if one would consider a population of uh, 5,500 frogs, how many would be shorter than 20.1 um, millimeters or longer than 22.2 millimeters? So we're still talking about the same. So how many frogs? So we would use our answer here. Whatever you got up in uh, C, I just multiply that by 5,500. So if you did that, you still get the marks here. That would be 3,066.8. And because we're talking number of frogs, that's rounded here. So I marked for that as well. And the last one, I realized you're probably not quite ready for that one yet. So um, I'm just going to make this a bonus. Okay? So write bonus next to this one. Okay, but I think you can still... If you talk z scores, you'll be 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's do that here. And then this will be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 somewhere. Okay. So a z score of negative 1 goes with 33.5. Negative 1 means you're to the left of the mean, right? So you're going to put, you're going to find the negative 1 here. You're going to put 33.5 right under it. And then a, a length of 38 has a z score of 2. So right under the two, you go 38. And make these lines, accentuate them a bit, like make sure you can see them. They should be equally spaced out. And you wanna think, you wanna focus on this. Between that value and the other value, how many gaps do you have in between? You've got three gaps, right? That's where the where the key is, because we know that the width of each one of these gaps is what the standard deviation is. So this is how I find my standard deviation. Should I give you a simpler example first? Um, if you were to look at the y-axis like, like this, and you see 5, 10, 15, you're like, oh yeah, that's a five. I'm going up by five, right? But that's fairly easy to see. In this case, I would go like this, write this one down. I go upper minus lower, and I divide it by the number of gaps. I'm gonna do this again in your notes, but it doesn't hurt to have it here. So upper is 38 minus the lower number is 33.5. You subtract those and you divide it by three. Three gaps, that's what this is. Okay. One, two, three. And so that gives you 4.5 over three, which is 1.5 and we are in millimeters at this point. You get a bonus mark plus one for getting that. And if you think about it, 33.5, if you go up by 
you get the 38, right? So you could have kind of guessed it or estimated. Um, so there we go, bonus for this one. So plus one if you got that. So what is this page out of? Uh, one, two, three, four. I'm oh, sorry, I gotta make sure here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this back side is worth six, six marks. And then the bonus, obviously you could have seven out of six if you get the bonus right. So uh, let's add it all up. So eight and six would be a total of 14. Make sure your name and last name is on there. 